climate change. The threat has become an international issue and the consequences of the global warming may affect everybody. One of its major problems is CO2 caused by burning fossil fuels like coal and petrol. But everyone has the right to better standard of living that means more energy requirement. Coal-operated thermal power stations are the main source of energy in India. But too often, local coal is of poor quality and supplies are insufficient. Not only is petrol expensive, but imports may be restricted in the future. Most industries need private backup power stations to ensure their production process. The state governments have brought the grid to nearly every village around the country. But often, the villagers do not know when power will be available. Kerosene is the main source of energy in slum areas. But wood is still used for cooking needs. The forests, depleted due to over-exploitation, have to be preserved above all to generate O2 and help prevent the climate change. India urgently needs energy but lacks the hard currency to buy good quality coal or petrol. The government has developed and it encourages the use of decentralized non-conventional energies which lead to sustainable development. India is largely rural and cattle are abundant. A locally available and renewable source of energy is cow dung. Cow dung has always been used by Indian families as fertilizer, as plastering for vaults or dried and used to replace firewood. The Ministry of Non-Conventional Energy Sources has developed a program to make use of cattle dung for biogas generation. In Gujarat, most of the families have their own biogas plant. Cow dung is mixed with an equal quantity of water twice a day in underground plant. After fermentation of the cow dung in the absence of air, biogas is produced which is taken to the house and used for cooking and lighting. With biogas, I don't have to spend hours looking for firewood every day. It's much healthier to cook with biogas. There is no smoke and everything is so much cleaner. The richer families were already using LPG instead of wood, but today the chief of the village is saving money since his wife is using biogas.
The building and the installation of the plant took only two weeks and after feeding it with the cow dungs for 20 days we were already cooking with biogas. Mamji has only one cow but usually three cows are needed to run a domestic biogas plant. In Punusan, 84 individual biogas plants have been installed with the help of Platinum Jubilee, a local non-governmental organization. The families who have no space in front of their homes or don't want a plant in their yard have installed the plant outside the village. The most wonderful thing is that cow dung not only provides biogas but the sludge can be used as a valuable fertilizer. This slurry comes from a much bigger plant, a community biogas plant. In the village of Versila, rich farmers are major suppliers of cow dung. By supplying the dung to the community biogas plant, I benefit and so does the community. People get gas and I get a good fertilizer in the form of slurry. Here the big cattle owners produce enough cow dung to provide biogas for 126 households, nearly half of the village. In this way, Versila saves 323 tons of wood per year. The biogas produced in these floating domes is distributed by underground pipes for two hours twice a day, even to those who have no cattle. Though I have no cattle, I get the gas. I can cook on it and feed the children and my father-in-law. The cooperative charges me 50 rupees. By creating the cooperative, we gave work to nine people. It has changed life for a lot of people in the village. My goal is to set up biogas plants in every village in my area. It is essential to have the backing of an organization to spread the biogas technology and to finance it if required. The village of Pura in Karnataka, for example, is backed by an organization called Application of Science and Technology in Rural Areas. Since women are the main beneficiaries of biogas, they are willingly to supply the plant with cow dung, although they only get a dung delivery fee of 0.02 rupees per kilogram. Actually, the dung is loaned to the plant because the owner gets it back as sludge. Biogas is not limited to cooking and lightening households. This dual fuel generator is started up on diesel and then runs on biogas to produce electricity. This village, like most villages in India, is electrified. But the electricity supply is extremely unreliable. With the biogas plant, the villagers can manage the energy supply themselves. This is an efficiently decentralized system of energy production. Now the villagers have a regular water supply and light when they need it. Swastik rubber products in Pune produce inflatable items like boats and life rafts out of rubberized fabric. 
the same material is used to construct biogas plants. Something which started out as a pure experiment turned out to be a valuable product for us and we hope that it will be an advantage not only in India but in many other developing countries. It is installed on the field and when the gas is produced, it is transported to home or consumption point. This balloon has been installed to pump water. This old age home for cows in Madras, Pinjrapole, is an invaluable supplier of cow dung. Some 1400 cows are kept here until they die a natural death. Their dung supplies energy for the workers in Pinjrapole who not only save on kerosene but also profit from selling the sludge to surrounding farmers. The huge vegetable markets in Indian cities produce large amounts of organic waste. Organic waste is a sanitation problem for municipalities since the space for landfills is expensive. A biogas plant has been installed as a pilot project at the Gultikadi market in Pune. The plant processes one ton of waste per day and the resulting gas is piped to the restaurants in the market itself. An economically viable self-sustaining system has thus been established on site. We are planning to expand and use the 30 tons of waste. This market produces every day in order to supply power for cold storage. At ISRO, Indian Space Research Center, the garden also benefits from the sludge of a biogas plant. The gas feeds one cooker that burns all day and replaces the equivalent of nearly one LPG cylinder per day. The canteen at the center prepares lunch for 800 people every day. It took only two years to recover the initial investment. Organic waste is also produced by a large number of industries. Today, the law does not allow effluents to be spilled into river anymore.
the waste water traditionally goes through an aerobic treatment plant which consumes a lot of energy and space. The Padamji Pulp and Paper Company uses an agricultural waste product from sugar cane known as Bagasi for pulping and producing paper. The bleaching of the pulp produces a chemical waste and the washing of the pulp produces large quantities of waste water with a very high organic content. 